Broadcasting live from our studio in Boston with presentations from prominent industry vendors, Solutions Review presents Data Demo Day, an online event for data management and analytics. I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review and welcome to Data Demo Day. For this edition, we're highlighting three category leading solutions delivering data observability, data automation, and embedded analytics. And we're pleased to say that these are some of the most innovative options available today. Next up is Syncery. And what makes Syncery such an interesting solution is their focus on the go-to-market stack. They've built a data automation platform designed to unify and optimize revenue applications into an operating system for your business, from leads to billings. Syncery helps businesses solve costly data inconsistencies by treating the enterprise application stack as one harmonized system while cleansing, merging, augmenting, and transforming data across them. It was built for revenue operations professionals and requires no code to automate key business processes through data flows. And joining us from Syncery is Neelish Shastri, CTO, CISO, and co-founder. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me here, Doug. Well, we're excited to hear more about Syncery. Uh, it's, um, it's really interesting uh, where you're going with this. And, I, and I'm curious uh, to just get a little bit more about your background and, and, and how you became a co-founder uh, of this solution. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in the software business for more than 20 years, uh, all over the place, specializing in data and big data in general. Uh, scalability is uh, something that uh, is close to my heart. So I spent a significant amount of time at Marketo and uh, that's where the genesis of Syncary was. Uh, me and uh, our co-founder, Nick Bonfiglio, both of us uh, were there at Marketo. And uh, Marketo did one thing well, right? Integration with Salesforce. Uh, it served its purpose, but uh, this was not something that was available in the market, the way Marketo did its integration with Salesforce. And when Nick started his second company, uh, he was finding for a solution which would solve the data automation problems. And we'll talk about what data automation is soon, but uh, this is basically about, uh, can I get uh, the same experience that Marketo provided with Salesforce across the revenue stack, uh, you know, in a seamless fashion. Uh, the short answer was no, and you know he had to spend a lot of engineering uh, uh, effort to get that going. So after that uh, initiative, uh, he reached out to me, and uh, that's how the whole uh, conversation started. And three years down the line, here we are. Yeah, and I, and I think it's fascinating that you're focused on this. Uh go to market stack, the, the, the revenue stack. Uh, yep. So I'm going to let you get, uh, get going on your presentation just to set everybody's expectations. We're happy to take questions. We will save them for the end. Uh, we'll reserve a little bit of time uh, to have that Q&A. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, let you uh, walk through the solution, uh, and we'll come back in 20 minutes or so and, and wrap things up. Sounds good. Thank you. Great. So who is Syncary, right? Uh, Syncary is a full stack data automation platform uh, that helps your uh, revenue teams align your business. What does that really mean, alignment, right? And that's the problem that we are uh, trying to solve with Syncary. Alignment in a nutshell is, does the right person in your company have access to the right information in the right system at the right time, right? So that basically translates to people, processes, data, and technology all aligning together to optimize your business. Uh, Forrester and Gartner and many people have a whole bunch of research around this area uh, and uh, surveys around this area which tell uh, that companies are still missing a shared view of the business data with all the technology that we have. Uh, multiple operations teams have emerged uh, to address this cross-business alignment uh, across different uh, teams inside an organization, but still it's not really uh, there and the problem is still persisting, right? So if you look at the, the, the journey of any company, right? As you start, uh, you tend to use the best of the breed uh, solutions for your revenue stack, you know, HubSpots of the world, Salesforces, Marketo, et cetera. And it works well, right? Native integrations are more than sufficient, uh, you can get by. 
But as you grow your business, uh, you realize that uh, you need more things to be done with these systems, especially across these systems, right? This is where your business process automation comes into picture. Uh, and uh, you start using tools which kind of do, if something happens in this system, then do this and that and that, right? So now, very quickly, you are in a place where you have deployed a bunch of such systems doing point-to-point -point process automation and point-to-point -point data integration. And then finally, if you really think about it, uh, what we call as the data chasm is you realize that all of this is about data and the data needs to be in a central place and you embark on that journey of uh, creating a data warehouse. How do you put data into that warehouse? How do you get data out of that warehouse? How do you derive insights, et cetera, right? Uh, unfortunately, this also creates another silo, uh, which is the data warehouse itself. So this is basically uh, what is the state of the art today. And we think uh, we have to uh, take another uh, strategy here to uh, fix this problem. Uh, what do we do? We align, analyze, and activate trusted data throughout the GTM stack. And uh, the definition of each of these terms is different for different people. Hence, we are a platform that uh, allows you to define these uh, integrations, uh, data policies, uh, synchronization, and insights using our no-code, full lifecycle data model-driven approach to this problem. Uh, so with that, uh, let me just switch over to the demo here. So this is, this is uh, the landing page of Syncery, right? Uh, we call this the Synapse Studio. So what is a Synapse? Uh, think of Synapse uh, as a connector uh, to any of the end systems that you care about. You see uh, on the screen, uh, Syncery is at the center of this universe. And then you have synapses or connectors connecting in and out of Syncery. There is no bi-directional point-to-point -point connectivity between say a Salesforce and a Zendesk. Every system connects into Syncery and out of Syncery, right? Uh, why do we call it a synapse and why, why not just a connector? Uh, it's primarily because of the intelligence that's built into each of these uh, synapses. They are not just API connectors, right? They understand the APIs, uh, obviously that's table stakes nowadays. They understand the different ways of authenticating into each of these systems. They also understand the schema or the data model of that system. And that's what makes it very unique, right? They also understand uh, very many first class operations that each of these systems uh, support, uh, including, for example, in Salesforce, you have a first class merge operation that allows you to merge multiple uh, records together, especially on contacts and accounts and leads, right? Uh, so uh, the Synapse understands that, hey, there is a first class merge operation on Salesforce and it will delegate to that operation uh, when the time is right. So uh, these connections typically happen over the internet, so they're brittle. Uh, there is a lot of error handling that you need to uh, uh, worry about, uh, rate limits, the throttling that the, the system enforces on you. You have to take care of all of those things. And the Synapse is a neat, succinct way of packaging all of those things together and providing a unified interface to a system, right? And how do you create a Synapse from uh, this laundry list of things that you have? If you see here, the library uh, supports a lot of the revenue stack uh, systems, uh, all the way from Salesforce to Eloqua, Marketo, uh, Gainsight, Jira, and so on, right? And this is a very customizable system. So you, if you don't see a, a system that's sub not supported here, then you can build one for yourself or we can help you build one very quickly using our custom uh, Synapse SDKs. So the, the superpower that Syncary has is that it's a hub and spoke model. Uh, everything connects into Syncary and out of Syncary instead of uh, uh, enabling a point-to-point -point integration. Um, so how do you create a synapse? It's really straightforward. Uh, let's pick Salesforce for as an example. Uh, you drag and drop it on the canvas, give it a name, the endpoint URL, and then you can choose one of the authentication mechanisms that that uh, uh, system uh, supports, username, password, or OAuth, and then you go through it, and you just activate uh, the synapse here. I'm just going to delete this one. Uh, and you can uh, see that the active synapse basically now shows you the schema of that system. I'm switching over to what we call the schema studio. Think of this as a data catalog, right? So the data catalog is uh, a, a holistic view of the, the schema of that system inside Syncity. So you have a single place where you can see the schemas of all the connected systems here, including HubSpot, 
Syncery itself, Zendesk, and so on, right? And it pulls the, the objects from that system. You can drill down into the fields. You can see the details of the fields. Uh, what, what's the name of the field, uh, the, the data type, any other constraints that uh, were imposed on this field. So all of that is visible right here. Uh, so the very next thing that you do after activating the set of synapses is come to Sync Studio. And this is the heart of Syncery in many ways. What you see here is a data model, right? You do not see uh, pipelines, you do not see workflows, you see a data model. And uh, this is where we are very different from uh, the typical traditional way of uh, integrations and data sync. Um, this data model is not Salesforce's data model. It is not a HubSpot data model, but it is your company's data model, right? And Syncery ships with an out of the box uh, model here for uh, the revenue stack, uh, you know, accounts, opportunities, contacts, tickets, uh, and so on. So if you click on this, uh, it will highlight all the relationships that it has automatically with the rest of your data model. It also will, um, if I go into this, uh, you see not just the fields which are part of your centralized data model, but also, uh, but also the data pipeline itself. Um, so you have the sources here on the left-hand side and you have the destinations on the right-hand side. So by taking this data model-based approach, you are connecting different systems into your data model. You are not just connecting APIs anymore, right? So in this particular case, uh, we are connecting customers from NetSuite, a company from HubSpot, account from Salesforce, and organization from Zendesk, right? So you can see that we have unified not just the data and the metadata, but also the vocabulary or the glossary, right? So a customer is called uh, uh, in by different names and different systems, but in your organization, you're calling it an account. And uh, now you have a canonical unified vocabulary uh, schema and also unified data set. Uh, so how does this really work? Think of this as a real-time pipeline of data that's flowing through each of these systems into your centralized data model, and then out of that centralized data model into the destinations on the right-hand side here. And as data is flowing through, you can do a lot of interesting things with it, right? So one thing that's happening here is uh, unification. So data unification is a very key concept. Uh, it's also called identity resolution. What we're doing here is as data is coming from NetSuite customer object, we are unifying that set of records with what's existing inside Syncery using uh, the domain name of uh, the record in Syncery and the domain name that is coming from uh, the, the NetSuite record, right? So now we are stitching together records similarly across these four systems into a single record inside Syncery. So this provides this unified worldview of that account object. So you can see how powerful this can become. Uh, we talked about the right person having access to the right information at the right time uh, in the right system. And this is how you achieve that by pulling, say, a customer temperature or a CSAT score for that company from Zendesk into your canonical account model and then back into Salesforce where your account executive has now access to this uh, customer temperature before they go on uh, and attempt to do a renewal. So that information is very important for that use case, for example. Uh, so what can you do uh, other than uh, just unification, right? A lot of things. So let's just quickly switch over to the contact object and its pipeline very similar to the, uh, the pipeline that we saw for accounts, uh, but let's just drill down into one of the fields. So now you are not only operating at the level of a record, but also at the level of a field. So here I have applied a data policy to the first name coming from these three systems, uh, does some basic things around removing non-printable characters and then trimming the first name and then capitalizing it and then uh, storing that in the first name field of the Syncery data model. And then that value goes into uh, Salesforce, HubSpot, and NetSuite again. So now we have defined a really quick data policy, which will control what kind of data is coming into uh, your system and uh, into your uh, systems and out of your systems, and also make sure that it's of the right quality, right? So this data policy is continuously applied to all the contact records coming from all these, all these three systems. So uh, another quick example is uh, a title. Uh, let's quickly go into the title field here. And you can see here that we are doing enrichment using a third-party enrichment service, right? 
So all drag and drop from a laundry list of transformation functions that are available on the right hand side here. Text functions, mathematical functions, enrichment functions, uh, look up ex across different objects uh, and so on, more than 50 of them here. So uh, you can do enrichment on the job title uh, using, uh, this one uses Clearbit uh, here, using the email address and gets out the employment title from Clearbit. And now you have a centralized uh, you know, enrichment uh, uh, going on for uh, all the contact objects. Um, so that's basically the power of Syncery, which allows you not just centralize uh, data, but also centralize your business processes, right? So that gives a world view of what's going on in your revenue stack uh, from a single uh, central place. Uh, we have the side effect of doing all of these things manifesting as Data Studio, which is basically a, a, a glimpse into your uh, unified data set, right? We talked about how the pipelines run, but now we are talking about the data itself. So if you look at accounts here, uh, this particular record is actually connected to three records from three different systems. Uh, one from Salesforce, one from HubSpot, and one from NetSuite, right? And it also tells you the IDs of those records from uh, each of those systems. Uh, what's even more interesting is you can look at the lineage of the data itself. Uh, this is really powerful, right? So now you not only have a unified view of that account, but you also know where did the account come from? It came from Salesforce. What other updates have happened? Uh, you know, 16 or so updates from NetSuite, a few updates from HubSpot over a period of time, and you kind of have a history of the changes that have happened to that record across your revenue stack. This is, this is very, very powerful, right? Um, so that's, that's basically uh, the power of Syncery. And once you have Data Studio and once you have this unified uh, uh, data, uh, data store, uh, the next logical thing is, hey, can I get insights uh, off of these uh, you know, uh, data sets? And the answer is yes. So Syncery ships with a, a, a built-in uh, BI tool, if you will. We call it insights. And right inside Syncery, you can create these reports, dashboards. We call them data cards and data sets and dashboards, uh, which uh, are driven by that unified data model. So this is, this is in a nutshell, the power of Syncery uh, and how we solve a, a laundry list of problems around alignment for your revenue stock. I'll stop there and uh, see if people have questions. And uh, there are a lot of other things that are going on in the product here, but this kind of gives, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the capabilities of the platform. Well, that's a, that's a great overview, and I actually particularly liked the, um, the first slide you presented where, and we see this at Solutions Review over and over again. People start with a point solution, maybe Salesforce, maybe they started with it 10 years ago or, or more. Um, and then they go and they bring in HubSpot, and then they, they think they're working together because the story is told that they will work together and then some other solution comes in and then another solution gets layered in. And, and, and oftentimes these are being controlled by different parts of the organization, different people, different divisions. Yep. Um, when, do, when do you see people starting to realize that that chasm that you mentioned is occurring? Um, and, and, and what do you see when, uh, with those folks that are coming to you and saying, you know, I think I have a problem. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it depends on the maturity of the organization, right? So, um, we call it a data maturity model, if you will, and it's a curve of sorts. Uh, there is a progression there and it depends on whether the person who is in charge of running the business, uh, revenue operations used to be called business operations, uh, you know, erstwhile, uh, do they have uh, this experience? Have they gone through this pain before in in their uh, career? And uh, that 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 kind of tells us, uh, you know, where they are, right? So when they come to us, uh, they are in two buckets. One is that they've already experienced it elsewhere, and they don't want to go through that pain again in their new uh, job. So uh, they realize this and they start right at the beginning, right? Which is which is a great way of uh, you know starting uh, uh, these practices in any company. Uh, you nip the problem in the bud. Uh, don't even get uh, that problem to grow at all. Uh, but you know that's idealistic, uh, and uh, you know more often than not, you're already in this state of 
I'm crossing the data chasm. Uh, now I have to invest somewhere. What do I do, right? And uh, we take the, the approach of being organic about it, uh, being incremental, because you know most of these projects fail because people try to boil the ocean. And that's a lot of time, effort, and uh, money spent uh, in doing these things. So Syncury allows uh, you know, uh, to get started very organically, take one small problem around uh, either integrations or data policies, uh, get over that, and then progressively keep adding more policies and more integrations into the stack and then you know eventually you'll get to a very good place so that's how we advise our prospects and customers to uh, get started with syncery well and i'm curious uh, as well uh well actually before i get to that question um what is the best way for people to engage with syncery is it uh, to go to the website which uh, i know has a a free trial feature is that is that typically how you do it or is it to do a custom demo how do you how do you see that working best? Yeah, so data and processes are very nuanced, uh, right? There is no one silver bullet uh, that can solve all your problems. So uh, we uh, we advise uh, prospects to uh, uh, go to the demo screen and then uh, schedule the demo. That way, uh, there will be a very customized demo uh, which addresses their pain points and not something generic or uh, uh, something uh, which is not useful for them. Uh, the, the free trial is there for uh, people who are uh, self-sufficient, uh, who want to play around with the platform uh, and uh, try if that suits their needs. That's another avenue as well. Excellent. Um, and so with regard to uh, the insight screen that you showed at the end, yep. um, again, I think it's, um, it's, it's interesting and I'd like to learn a little bit more about the added value that you can get from there, because certainly, obviously, every every point solution provider in that uh, that slide you showed at the beginning has a certain amount of visual uh, representation of data. Yep. How does the Syncery Insights um, screen bring all that together, and what does it show that might be a little bit different? Yeah. So it's about closing the loop, right? So if you if you go Traditionally, you're talking about a, a warehouse solution and then you're talking about a BI tool on top of that to uh, derive insights, right? Analyze what's going on in your business. Uh, so the question is, uh, how is data landing in your warehouse and can you trust the data, right? And if you cannot trust the data, how do you make sure that the data is trustable, right? And what are the out of the box models that you can uh, you know, get, uh, which can be used uh, automatically, right? Uh, none of these things are possible with your traditional approach. You have to invest in a team which can pull data from all these different systems into your warehouse. You have to make sure that data is fresh enough, right? It's not enough uh, for the warehouse to uh, refresh this data once a week, uh, but it has to be very much near real time because uh, uh, instant information is the king nowadays. Uh, you have to trust the data, which means uh, has it gone through a rigorous data quality process? Uh, have missing fields been identified? Have uh, you know have missing records or missing data been excluded from your reporting because they're going to skew? Uh, there is a saying in the machine learning community, garbage in, garbage out, right? And that applies to insights too. Uh, so just dumping data in a warehouse and you know trying to run reports on that is not enough. And this is where Syncery shines. Uh, because you already have invested in the data pipelines, uh, you have invested in data unification, uh, you already can trust the data because that data is available in uh, uh, across your revenue stack already. Now you are accessing the same data from an insights uh, tool, which you're guaranteed that the data is going to be okay because you have defined the policies already. The data is clean, consistent, cohesive, and it has information from across your revenue stack. So that's uh, you know uh, the superpower that uh, Syncery brings in and out of the box models, right? So we are squarely targeting the revenue stack, which means a bunch of these reports are out of the box. You don't have to start from scratch. Uh, you already have answers to uh, you know the top 10 typical questions uh, that you would ask when you're running a business. So those are uh, you know some of the really cool things that you can do with insights. Well, so um, we've gotten a question which we often get uh, around, a, around a data demo like this. Uh, and that is around ensuring that data is kept secure. Um, what have you done? I mean, obviously, you, you've been part of building this thing. 
How have you how have you dealt with security within the uh, solution itself? Yeah, so we are a SOC 2, type 2 compliant company. We take uh, data security very seriously. We are also HIPAA compliant. Um, we host sensitive data and we realize this and we understand this. Uh, so uh, data security is uh, at the center of it. Security is not a, a bolt on or an add on for us. It's you know woven into the fabric of the product, our processes and our people. Excellent. Um, before we go, I'm curious, uh, I don't think a lot of people have realized that a solution like this exists. Uh, and I'm curious what you would offer um, for advice as people are becoming aware of it and, and are thinking about engaging. You know, what should they be thinking about? Should it be where their data exists, where they think they have um, holes? Should it be, you know, bringing the disparate team players together? I mean, what would you offer for, for advice as people are starting to move toward a solution like this? Uh, if I had one advice, it is think about data model and data and not about systems, right? Every system uh, provides one perspective of your data and that system really doesn't own that data. It's just one perspective, right? Especially when it comes to customer data, uh, you really have to think about, okay, what does an account mean for me and my organization across these five different, you know, revenue uh, affecting teams, product teams, uh, you know, the, the sales teams, the marketing team, uh, the customer success life support team, and your financial team, right? What's the definition of an account? Start thinking, you know, on those terms, and then you will realize that, okay, this is what makes more sense than, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, just a, a billing customer versus uh, uh, an account that can be targeted versus uh, a lead versus a contact, right? So the, the paradigm shift here is to start thinking about data models and how you connect all these systems into your data model rather than thinking about these things as siloed uh, uh, versions of data. So we have another question that has come in around uh, the synapses, the mm -hmm. connectors that you were mentioning uh, toward the beginning. Um, what other types of applications do you support and, and how do you support potentially custom applications or custom yeah. connections, I guess? Yeah, Syncrity is uh, all set on the platform. So uh, you can extend the platform in uh, you know, different uh, directions. So uh, one of them is uh, custom synapses, uh, which has an SDK using which uh, you can build a, a connector uh, to any system that we don't support out of the box. Uh, it's fairly straightforward to do. We also have custom actions, uh, which is basically, think of it as uh, an outbound uh, HTTP call to any external system from within your data pipelines, right? Uh, so that's another way to extend uh, the platform as well. Excellent. Um, one more. Uh, do you connect to on-prem systems? Uh, we do uh, connect to a subset of the on-prem systems uh, that uh, uh, we can uh, connect via IP whitelisting or you know firewalls, uh, but we do not have an agent that you can install on-prem and uh, connect to that that way yet. <laughs> I like that. All right. Um, well, this was great. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, it's a very interesting solution. We would certainly encourage everybody to go to Syncrity.com and and uh, and check out more about it because it's really it's it's going in a direction that I think uh, is certainly underserved and uh, I think people need to know more about. So, thanks very much for the time today. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. You bet. Bye. Well, there you have it. Another data demo day in the books. We want to thank all of the solutions for their participation today. And we appreciate your attendance as well. Until next time, I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review. Thanks for watching.